This video is a short introduction to the Schleicher ASH-26E self-launching sailplane. The 26E is equipped with a Ostro 50 horsepower rotary engine. It has an 18 meter wingspan and includes winglets. It has a low drag airfoil that is capable of a 50 to 1 glide ratio. The maximum all up weight of the 26E is 1,158 pounds, which gives it a 9.22 pounds per square foot wing loading. The VNE on the 26E is 146 knots. The fuselage tank holds four and a quarter gallons of fuel. If equipped, the wing tanks can hold four gallons each, giving you approximately 12 total gallons of fuel. Okay, this is a walk around of the SH 26E fuselage. Just as it's been pulled out of the trailer. Okay, this is uh, the interior of the 26E. This is a magnetic compass, altimeter, airspeed, mechanical vario, electric vario, and this is a display S vario with inertial guidance or inertial reference rather. This is the farm display, switch for the farm, radio, modus transponder, trick 21. This is the ILEC engine controller, its circuit breaker. These are charging connectors for the two batteries. These fuses here are for the instruments. And this is where the OD goes. Not installed yet. This is a fire detector, an engine fire detector. To turn on the instruments Look this up to battery one. It's the avionics battery. And you can hear the radio. I'll turn that down. Turn it off. Okay, to turn on the ILEC, push in that circuit breaker and The ILEC display is now active. This white switch here cycles through what is being displayed on the display right now. This is RPM and liters of fuel remaining. Full, this would read 16. I push this, it now reads water temperature, which is too cold to register. Push it a second time, read the air temperature, again it's too cold to register. 
third time it reads a battery voltage, 12.7. If I flip this switch, the propeller extends out of the fuselage. And once fully extended, this green LED here is lit. To retract the propeller. I've got to put this switch in the down position and hold it down. And the propeller is now retracting into the fuselage. Once it's fully retracted, this green LED comes on. The engine will not start if you don't have that green LED lit. That's very important. Uh, to understand, especially during a restart, in-air restart. This here is an hour engine hour meter. It's reading right now 82.73 hours. This is the ignition switch. I flip it on. You'll hear the electric fuel pumps running and this battery light will come on because the engine isn't running and the alternator is not generating any voltage. Flip it off and the battery light goes off. There's indicators here for RPM. If it's, it's green, yellow, and red. Green means you're below 6200 RPM Yellow means you're between 6,200 and uh, I believe uh, 7,000 or 6,900 and red is you're 6,900 and higher. Oil means you've lost oil pressure. It will come on red. If I turn this off, you'll see all these indicators light up briefly. To that's, a, that's an, a, a, a light indicator test. You make sure all those indicators are functioning. This is for testing the two ignition boxes. When the engine's running, you can push it up to test ignition box one, push it down to test ignition box two. If you lose power, you have a bad ignition module. This is the uh, refuel mode from the wing fuel tanks. If you pl flip this up, it will open a solenoid valve and fuel will drain from the wing fuel tanks into the fuselage tank. If you have it in auto, the fuel will automatically drain below a preset level. I think it's around uh, eight liters. You can test that solenoid valve by hitting up. If you hear that click, that's the solenoid valve opening. That should be part of your pre-flight test check because if that solenoid valve is not working you will not refuel from your wing tanks if you have wing tanks of course. To start the engine, okay well This is the uh, controls for the, primarily for the engine. Uh, plus you have the pedal control here. You pull out to adjust the pedals. That pulls the pedal forward. 
or you can push them back with your feet. The engine controls will start with the, the prop, stop. Right now the prop stop is off. If I pull this handle out and down and in, repeat that, okay. out, down and in, the prop stop is now in place. Obviously for starting the engine this prop stop has to be disabled. It covers up somewhat the starter switch, but you can still start it if you have a mind to do so. This is the throttle lever. Down is in the idle shutoff. Up is full throttle. This is the master switch. It's on. That way it's off. This is the primer button. You'll need to prime the engine for two to three seconds prior to starting if it's cold. If it's hot, you probably don't need to prime it at all. If it's uh, been pretty warm and you're at high altitudes, you probably only want to prime it for a second, no more than two seconds. And this, of course, is a starter button. The rest of the cockpit. This is the tow release, which we don't use much. I've never used it. This is the gear handle. This gear is up retract it and you push it down uh, to extend the gear. This is the water dump ballast valve here. That's dump, that's closed. I don't carry water because I'm too heavy. This is a list of the fuses they're numbered from 1 to 16. 16 is not used. And on the right hand side, it get, lists their amperage. So if you blow a fuse, replace it with a fuse of the same amperage. The 3.15 amp fuses may be somewhat hard to find. I would use a, uh, a 3 or 5 amp fuse. Here are your principal flight controls. This is the stick. Push to talk for the radio. This is the flap handle. It's in the landing position right now. This would be your, your uh, uh, takeoff position. This would be your normal flying flap. This is high speed setting. Or if you are ground taxiing. And the first part of the takeoff roll, put the flap in the most uh, forward negative position. This will give you uh, the earliest possible aileron authority. This is the spoiler handle. You push it forward to lock and close it. Back, if you pull it back, you will activate the wheel brake. 
and as a part of your pre-flight test pull this handle back without the wheel down I guess it really doesn't matter if the wheel is up or down pull it back and feel that resistance there you should not have it go freely back and clunk against the stop if you do that means you're missing some hydraulic fluid in your wheel brake and you will have no wheel brake this is your uh, your trim indicator on the stick there's a push uh, uh, pulled for trim that opening pulling on that will allow the trim to change releasing it locks the trim in place this is your fuel valve right now it's open pull it back for closed I would advise leaving it open under all circumstances you may forget to open it during the stress of an in-flight air restart and of course you won't restart if, the, if that uh, is the situation up here are the rudder pedals it's self-explanatory back we have an oxygen bottle which I think still has some oxygen in it it does and we got a pair of wheel charts there These are the fuel line hookups for the wing fuel tanks. You have two per tank. One is uh, for the fuel line and one is for the uh, pressure relief. This is the fuel line that goes to the fuel, the fuselage fuel tank. And there's a disconnect on it. I normally leave that connected at all times, even when assembling. This is the propeller pylon. During pre flight, We will turn the propeller and we should feel resistance as it compresses. And you'll hear a puff coming out of the exhaust. as it goes through a compression cycle. This is the drive belt for the propeller. If you do this, hear that twang? That indicates you've got proper tension on that belt. If you want to be really specific, you can get a guitar tuner and you can measure the frequency there, uh, there's a specific frequency I think it is G middle G that that uh, produces this is the radiator for the engine I do not check the water level because if you open this it's pressurized 
coolant will come out and make a mess. So we, we uh, there is a overflow tank right here. This is the coolant overflow tank. Let me zoom in on that. And you can see some coolant in, in that little plastic tank. It's not very large. Probably holds a, a fifth of a liter, a liter or so. Okay, back to the belt. These are the idler rollers for the belt. And you can see them turn as I turn the propeller. They should, they should turn freely and not make any noises like uh, what you would get if a bearing was going bad. If you hear any noises out of that idler pulley, you got a bad bearing, it needs to be replaced. This is the prop stop that we talked about earlier. These are coolant hoses, inlet and outlet hoses for the radiator. They have been known to leak. So watch for any evidence of coolant on your engine. Now, it will have dried by the time you do your next inspection. So you'll be looking for green spots that will get sprayed out over all these engine parts. I've had a hose here crack that spray, sprayed coolant out and it was very obvious that there was coolant being sprayed on the engine. Looking at the engine itself, you can't see much of the engine. It's buried down in there, but it's there. This is the air intake for the engine. This is the impeller uh, blower fan for the engine. This little belt right here, zoom in. drives the oil pump. This is the starter ring gear right there. And the starter motor is right down in that area. As we go around, okay, let's this micro switch here, this, this micro switch is for the engine extended. If you don't get the green light and the prop is fully up, check and make sure that this micro switch is closed and activating. Or you could have a, a wire breakage. That will do the same thing. This is the air filter, the air inlet that goes forward down to the carburetor. That's, that's the carburetor. And there's two adjustments. It's 
pretty hard to see. I'll zoom in. Having a hard time focusing. But right in the center of the screen is one of the adjustments. This is this is uh, for adjusting the fuel flow in the carburetor. And down right there underneath it you can see the second adjustment. The, the lower one is the low speed jet and the upper one is the high speed jet. If you get stumbling of the engine during takeoff roll or if you have hard starting your carburetor may need to be adjusted there's other things that will have to be checked for as well uh, but that's the first place to start Okay, this is the exhaust manifold that runs down here to the muffler and then exits upward through this exhaust port. When you do an engine shutdown, you don't retract the propeller all the way. And the reason is very simple. If you're if the pro propeller is retracted all the way, it gets to be very close to this very hot exhaust port here, the muffler. And that heat from that hot uh, muffler will damage the propeller. So there's a, a cool down procedure that you must follow when shutting down the engine. It involves taking the propeller down, so it's, it's about this far away from the, from the uh, muffler. This is the electric drive for propeller extension. These hoses here are your fuel lines. This is your incoming fuel hose. And it, and it tees, tees off here because there's two fuel pumps. Uh, and you have to have a very specific fuel pressure for proper operation, which is detailed in the maintenance manual. This is your oil tank. And after every couple of flights, you'll want to fill this up. And you put oil in right here. It has a little dipstick and you can see how much oil you have by putting it down. I'm fairly low so I'm going to have to refill this. Uh, there's, I've seen different techniques for filling this up. A friend of mine has a electric pump from uh, a RC plane that he uses. I've used a funnel and a syringe pump. Everything works to a certain degree but it is kind of messy if you screw up. Uh, what 
you don't want to do is you don't want to overfill the tank. You want to leave a gap between uh, about here and the top of the tank. So what happens if you overfill it is there's a pressure relief hole on, on this cap here. And oil will come out of that and cover your oil tank here. And it, it, I guess it's possible that it could cause a fire. It's, it's theoretically possible, let's put it that way. Now putting this cap back on is a little tricky. I do it left-handed. You have to rotate it until it catches a thread. It hasn't caught one yet. I'm not sure I can do it holding the camera. Nope, it still have not done it. Okay, well... Yeah. Alright, I'll give up. I'll do it after I set the camera down. And back here is a storage area, which they say is just for a um, recorder. But, you will you can put, uh, you know, some stuff back here, like uh, a coat or something pretty light. This is your re uh, fuel refilling port. You need, you should have a an adapter, a hose that will plug into this, the male side of this, with uh, that thing will go to an external gas can. And then uh, some gliders have a ref refueling pump, some don't. My glider has the refueling pump option, so I can flip this switch up and you hear the, hear the pump run. It makes a pretty loud sound until it primes and starts pumping fuel. Oh, by the way, this this switch here for the avionics, I can run off of either the avionics battery or the engine battery. So, if I have a long flight and the avionics battery is going low, I can resort to using the engine battery. Of course, you're now taking energy out of the battery that you'll need to start your engine in case you need to do an in-air restart or start at an uh, airfield. But that's, uh, you do, at least you have the option. This switch is inoperable. Down here, there, there is a pretty abbreviated uh, pre-flight and pre-takeoff uh, checklist. Okay, this is the position the prop is in for during the cool down period. I got into the cockpit, lowered it till I lost sight of the prop in the mirror. You'll have a mirror 
right here for observing prop position. This is for cockpit ventilation as well as this eyeball ventilator 